women empowerment or um, enhancing um, the leadership capabilities of young girls. And I focus in those particular areas because I try to show up in spaces as the person that I needed and wanted when I was younger. And so that's how I choose to live my life and that's where I choose to spend my extra time. But those of you that do volunteer, I'm sure you know that it's like having another job. So I have the job that pays me, and then I have the job that doesn't pay me. Um, but actively involved in several different organizations um, and truly love the joy that it brings to me um, when I'm able to give back to our local community. I am also a dog mom, and I'm smiling and excited about it because on Sunday, my dog turned 16 years old. I, thank you, and I didn't think she was gonna make it. So funny story, or maybe not so funny story. In December, she was experiencing some major health issues, and I just knew this was gonna be end of life for her. So I sent out a message to all of my family and friends and said, hey, I need for you to say your last goodbyes to Sasha. Her name is Sasha Renee, we share a middle name. Um, I'm like, you need to say your goodbyes to Sasha. She's not gonna make it to Christmas. But then she made it through Christmas, and I'm like, oh my God, okay. But then I was like, she's not gonna see the new year. And I'm like, you really need to come visit and you know, say your goodbyes to her. And they're like, okay, you know, people visited, they called, they FaceTimed, we Zoomed, all the things that she made it through the new year. And I'm like, it's gonna be Valentine's Day, she's not gonna make it. <laughs> Finally, they said, don't send us another message. Like, send us a message that she is no longer alive. I'm like, the God, it's it up. Um, but thankfully, she did make it to see another birthday, and she's 16, and she brings me so much joy to my life. So that's a little bit um, about me. At the end, we'll share different ways that you can connect with us, but we'd love for you to stay connected with me. If you have any other questions about me personally, happy to answer those. Awesome. So as Denise was talking about her dog, I have to add this. I watch Sasha all the time when she's out of town, and when I tell you I pray all the time that nothing happens to Sasha, I mean it. Because every time Denise goes out of town on vacation, she's like, do not ruin my vacation. Do not tell me if something happened to my dog. So just know that when she's relaxing on vacation, I am super stressed that nothing happens to her dog. My name is Mariana. I use pronouns she, her, hers, a uh, professionally. I'm the director of La Casa Cultura Latina here at the University of Illinois. Um, professionally, my journey has been interesting and also interesting where I'm at today. So I was actually born in Guatemala. And the moment I was born, we immigrated, or not immigrated, the moment I was born, um, we went straight to Nicaragua, which is where my immediate, a lot of my immediate family still lives. Um, so grew up in Nicaragua, small, small little town, or as we would say in Spanish, pueblo, called Guaco Nicaragua. Most people don't know it exists. You can Google it and see the population. It's known to be a cattle country, to be honest with you. Hidden in the middle of the mountains, really beautiful. Grew up there until the age of four. Um, there's a million different reasons why my mom immigrated and or why we immigrated and so I actually stayed back in Nicaragua for about a year and a half before she figured out how she was going to bring me over and we ended up um, moving to Miami, Florida. She was already living there. I try to describe my life where I say I have a very hyphenated life because although I was born in Guatemala, I really identify more as being from Nicaragua but what happened in the process is my mom married a Cuban and we were surrounded by his family. And so we celebrated the holidays, Cuban style, grew up with Cuban music, very Caribbean. So when I connect with someone from my country, they're like, wait a minute, you don't even have our dialect. So I feel like I have a very, very hyphenated life. Um, went to school in South Florida and then I grew up in a very typical, strict Latino household super strict. <laughs> I was not allowed to have boyfriends. I was not allowed to shave until I was like 15, 18, like super strict. So I wanted to go as far away as possible, but still pay in-state tuition. So I ended up at the University of West Florida, which was night and day from Miami, Florida. So how many of you maybe are not from Central Illinois? Raise your hand. Yeah, okay, so awesome, half the room. So you probably might be able to identify with, right, maybe growing up in a different community and then the culture shock of everything, whether it's people, food, things close down early, 
um, et cetera, et cetera. And that was my experience for undergrad and my master's. In my master's program, I realized that I have a really big passion for giving back to my community, the Latino community. So I made the goal that the next institution I would work at would be a Hispanic serving institute, which is how I ended up in New Mexico. I lived in New Mexico for six years. Um, I ended up working, working at New Mexico State University for six years. I share this because I always thought there were certain things about my life that would go a certain way, that I would always live near the beach, that I would not be landlocked, that I would live in the city. And how my life's journey has played out to be, it has been none of that. And I'm very thankful that I've been very um, willing to accept different opportunities and, and even opportunities that are outside my comfort zone. So fast forward, I did a national job search after being at New Mexico and really not having any room to grow. And that's how I ended up in the middle of the cornfield. <laughs> my passion for again giving back to my own community. And similar to what Denise said is really being that, that person that I didn't have. Yes, I had a mentor in college, but my mentor did not identify with my community. My mentor wasn't someone that I could go to and talk about that microaggression I just experienced. Or my mentor wasn't someone that could encourage me and say, you know what, no, speak Spanish, forget what everyone else says about speaking your native language in a public setting. So it's kind of my journey of how I ended up here. I love my job. I've been here for the last three years. But again, never thought it would be in central Illinois. The winters are awful. I like, they are. If, you, if you're new to the area and you haven't, like, come talk to me. It's not cute. But I can give you some tips. We have um, to share your very first photo you took in the I do. <laughs> I am a higher education professional. I fell into this field. Honestly, because I was pursuing my parents' dreams of me wanting to be a doctor, and I kept failing botany, y'all. Botany, biology, I was in a biology for non-majors, and I was just awful at it. And I realized I wanted to do and be what my mentor was, and that was someone in a field in this kind of setting of higher education to help my students with their imposter syndrome and help them just get through. Um, so higher education has a big part in my life. I'm a community lover. I believe that even if you're not born or raised in the community you currently live in, you should give back. I don't judge those that don't, but I do think that there's a beauty in giving back to your local community. I will say my experience out in the Southwest really developed this for me even more because in the Southwest, it's all about giving back to local businesses. It's all about the land. It's all about um, the native individuals that live on the land and really focusing on local and community. Um, the organizations I'm a part of revolve around empowering K through 12 individuals and then also finding ways to elevate and provide access to the Latino community in town. And I'm also a dog mom. <laughs> My dog's name is Harley Jenkins Ortega. And he actually um, just turned nine. I get it confused. It's either the 4th of June or the 6th. He was adopted. Did not plan to get a dog either. Um, and I love him to death. And Denise also talks to him. And we say that that's her boyfriend because he is like obsessed <laughs> with Denise. So that's I just love me. <laughs> so that's just a little bit about um, both of us. And we're going to just dive in and talk a little bit about our platform. Yeah, so the Complicated DM is uh, our podcast that we uh, decided to come up with randomly on a girls' trip. Uh, but I will back up just a little bit and just share how Marianne and I first met because that was really the catalyst of how our conversations began and why we decided to um, create this podcast. But uh, we met at a recruitment event, one of the organizations that I was involved in. We were actively trying to recruit women of color to be more engaged, involved in this particular organization. And so one of my friends um, gladly hosted a wonderful brunch for us. And she actually invited most of the women. We actually sucked at recruiting women to come to this brunch. But most of the people that were there was because our mutual friend had invited her. Mariana was new to the community and she was trying to get connected and meet new people. I instantly fell in love with Mariana. We connected on just a lot of different things that we were talking about and I don't know if you know that if you're at that stage in your life but it's really hard meeting friends and developing friendships as an adult um, and I struggled with that and so 
I'm connecting with her and thinking, oh my God, I really want to be her friend, but I don't know how to ask if she wants to be my friend. Um, and she ended up asking me for my number. We exchanged numbers and I was super excited that we were going to be friends. Um, it was also the year that I was turning 40, so I was getting ready for my birthday trip. But when we came back, we hung out for the very first time and we've been connected ever since. Fast forward a few months after that, we went on a girls trip, having the most amazing conversations. And Mariana says, we need a podcast. And I was like, yeah, girl, we do. <laughs> and we decided to create this podcast with the mission of educating others on the importance of having a healthy lifestyle and relationship that erases societal norms. Because what we realized is that we had a lot of things um, in common, a lot of similarities, but we also were afraid to really talk about them out loud in other spaces and with other people. And we decided that we just need a platform so that we can normalize some of the things that are really taboo to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. So oh, another important thing that you need to know is in Strengths Finder, Denise and I both share Activator. How many of you have taken that test before? Like that, a few of you, that personality. So I had always for a while, even when I lived in New Mexico, wanted to start a podcast, but I never really had a friend that was like, let's do this, Beth, like, let's do this, let's make this happen. Literally, instantly, like, when are we going to meet? Like, how are we going to get this going? And we share this because sometimes it's a simple idea that maybe even during your internship this summer comes up, right? A light bulb is turned on, act on it. Like, don't let that, don't miss that opportunity because you don't know where, where it's going to lead you or where it's going to take you. And in the process, we were dreaming really big um, because we're like, you know what, we're not just going to create it as a podcast, we're going to create an LLC with it because we don't know where it's going to take us. And we, we have big dreams because part of the, one of the things we connected on is on Amanda Seals. Anyone know who Amanda Seals is? Okay, cool. So look her up on Instagram if you don't. Super dope woman who is just talented in so many different areas. You either love her or you hate her. I'm going to tell you that right now. And we both love her. But part of that is just how true and real and raw she stays. And she was really a motivation for us of let's start this, let's create the LLC, and let's see where it takes us because we don't know. Maybe we um, take off really well on a podcast platform, but maybe speaking opportunity is where we thrive the most. Um, so when you are starting these, one of the things we want you to lead with from the slide is dream big from the beginning and don't let that dream be small. You know, you never know. You never know at all. Well, and then our name. Let me just tell you like, yeah, our story about the name. What our name. So as Mariana mentioned, we used to have like weekly or bi-weekly meetings to like develop this plan and figure out this podcast. And we were at dinner one night and uh, Mariana was just sharing some information um, about her life just a personal story. And at the end of the story, she said, she was like, oh gosh, Denise, my life is so complicated. And I was like, girl, my life is too. I was like, we're just a complicated DM. And we were like, oh, <laughs> that's the name of our podcast. And the D does stand for Denise. And then everybody got that because we get that shade once in a while. That's like, what are y'all trying to do with your name? Um, and then for the record, we did have, it was three of us originally. And I, and I say this because I think it's, Little things you really need to think about, right, when you take a journey like this. The third person was not in a space where they could be 100% vulnerable and put stuff out there. Because as you and I know, you put things out there and people will twist your words, use it against you. And it's, it's a big commitment to put um, your thoughts out there, you know, not to be questioned and the individuals didn't feel comfortable. And I will say, right, you may hit a hurdle. Don't let that be the reason why you don't continue. So we looked at each other and were like, wait, do you still want to do it? <laughs> yes, yes. All right, you bet. Let's make this happen. Um, so also don't allow, even if it's right from the beginning, because I remember feeling like, oh, crap. Maybe Denise isn't going to want to do this anymore. Because we had a whole other name in everything yeah. already um, going with uh, three of us. So as we dive into today's presentation, these are the four main tips that have surfaced through our episodes that we want to leave you with, um, and or maybe just give you some processing thoughts to think about. The first one revolves around protecting your peace. The second one really revolves around embracing where you're at and being okay with what that is, no matter what that journey currently is right now. The third one is always being kind and extending grace. And the fourth one is really looking at everything from a collective standpoint. 
um, collective healing, collectiveness as, as a community versus individual success. Protect your peace. So this is something that I talk about all the time. And again, mainly because of the journey that I've been on the last several years, just really uh, showing up in spaces authentically. And sometimes that has required me to set really healthy boundaries. And as you know, there are times when you uh, need to set boundaries, but you don't necessarily have the courage to do so, not necessarily because of yourself, but because of how you set in your boundary might impact other people within your spaces, where they, whether they are your family, your colleagues, um, close peers, uh, friends, things of that nature. But it's absolutely important that you think about your own personal health, your own personal journey, and how you want to show up in all of your spaces. And taking a moment and thinking about what it is you need to do, the steps that you need to take to think holistically about what does that look like for you. So we are in season three of our um, podcast, yay, and an upcoming episode is about setting healthy boundaries and what that really looks like for you. In this episode, we give lots of personal examples of things that we've had to do to set um, some of those boundaries so that it is protecting our peace. One of the stories um, that we share is a time where I actually had to uh, block an individual, a friend from my life. I you know, deleted the phone number, put them on block status, blocked them from all social media, deleted the email, like all of the things. And not necessarily to prevent them from communicating with me, but really to stop myself from being tempted to reach back out to them. We had reached a point, and this was a friend that I had been friends with for almost 20 years. Uh, but I was going through something in a moment, and I sent the person um, a text message just to update them on what I was going through. And their response was just, it was really mean. Like, I looked at it, I was like, well, that was really mean. And then I immediately deleted it because I didn't want to read it again and again and start internalizing it and making myself feel um, even worse. And so I, in that moment, decided to protect myself, to protect my peace, and to no longer communicate uh, with that person. It was one of the most challenging decisions I've ever made um, in my entire life because this was a person that I truly loved, I still love, um, and definitely wish them the best. But in that moment, I realized that this was no longer a friendship that was serving me. And I had to think for a moment, if something happened to this person, how would it make me feel? And knowing that I no longer want to communicate, and I felt okay with that decision, because if this person truly ever needed me, there are other people in our circle, in our spaces, that know how to connect with me. Otherwise, I needed to remove that person from my life because it was just no longer bringing me joy. Um, what my therapist always says, which I'm in and out of therapy for several years, <laughs> which is another podcast episode, but he always encourages me to have courageous conversations, not only with other people, but with myself and making those really tough decisions that are really hard to make, but in order to have balance in your life, you have to really think about what are those things that you know, bring you happiness or things that you know, make you feel anxious, because I definitely do not enjoy working from a place of anxiousness, um, and start thinking about how you can either limit those things in your life or remove them from your life completely. Protecting your peace is also protecting your health. Awesome, and that, the values look different, and I think that we don't talk about that, so hopefully you listen to that episode um, in season three. The next one is really embracing where you are in your journey, and that is okay. So I'm gonna ask for audience participation, all right? So don't get nervous if I come up to you, challenge my choice, if you don't wanna show, it's fine. I want you to think a little bit about maybe something in your life currently, um, that in your journey, as you think about, right, what you want your life to be, that you're struggling because you're like, mm, this wasn't the path I thought. Now maybe it could be Illinois was in the school you thought. It could be anything. All right, so I want everyone to think about what that is. And I want you to raise your hand if you're willing to share. So I'll go first. I'll be vulnerable. I don't know any of y'all. <laughs> but I'll be vulnerable and I'll share. So over 10 years, I, so I was the person in the friend group that I always knew what I wanted to be. Well, after we, you know, hashed out the doctor stuff, 
I um, said, I want to be a vice president of student affairs somewhere. Like, that is my dream job. I want to get my doctorate. And I've been in this profession for over 10 years, and that is not what I want to be. It is not. So to have, um, in your late, mid-30s, this realization of homegrown, no, <laughs> that's not it. It's hard, right? Especially if you were that friend in the group that, like, you always knew what you wanted to do. So that, that's mine. Anyone want to share theirs? You've had some food in your tummy. Perfect. Awesome, I'm going to come back here. And if you're comfortable, say your name so we know who you are. No, that's cool. Hi, everyone. I'm David Lovian Shredi. I'm currently CEO of Vitalintomat. And I basically, my whole life, I was going to be a physicist, finish my PhD, and last semester, right before my defense, um, I started a company. And uh, I've been on physics since then. But I'm not unhappy with you know, that, that path. It led me to certain things that I appreciate now. But I'm happy where I am now. So. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Did you ask one? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Yeah, hi, I'm Wayne. Anyway, I, like him, actually, I started out in physics, and I realized well into it that actually it wasn't really the place for me, and I really enjoyed doing computer science, and so I, I pivoted into computer science. That wasn't actually what I was going to say, but I had that shared. Um, but anyway, after college, I got out, and I had a great job with a company doing consulting, and it was fantastic, and I really liked my job, and I did it for a year or two, and imagine doing that for an extended period of time and um, and then they, they you know like every week I would fly somewhere different and at some point I went back to headquarters just we would do that periodically and actually found out that was the day they were having like a huge layoff and it and just like kind of hit me like a ton of bricks and I was really surprised um, but uh, anyway I got a great job shortly after that and you know no big deal but it, it, it was just a, a big surprise one yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you to both of you for being vulnerable with us uh, this lunch hour and sharing. So as you can see, multiple examples, right? And it's, oh, here you go. I love this. I actually have two, kind of. Um, so my name is David. I'm currently going to be a sophomore, and I'm working at Ameren as a data scientist. And one thing vulnerable was I always thought I wanted to do computer science. And coming, I'm like, OK, yay, CS. But then I switched more to the math side. Because for me, I just enjoy like the complexity of everything coming together like a puzzle mm -hmm. and understanding, for example, if I'm modeling something, why does this model work per se and how can we actually get down to the nitty gritty of it instead of just throwing XG boost or some random model at it. Um, on, the, on the fun side, um, I always thought I always wanted to run a lot too, but then I realized that it wasn't good for me, especially the longevity in my knees and my discs and everything. So I switched more to cycling and running, but I still run. I love that. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. So what I heard people say is it also taps into their strengths, right? That maybe sometimes the journey we're on, we're not necessarily using our strengths or our passion. This is something that surfaces a lot in our episode because we want to normalize what we're going through. We want to normalize that you don't have to take a parallel path, right? I tell my students all the time, if you want to be this today, do it. And if you get bored and you want to do something else, do that too. It doesn't matter. I think we've been raised in a society that tells us we have to have this plan, it has to be this, and that's it, right? And that may be multiple things or taking different journeys and allowing that. And so really, in that process, come as you are. In that process, embrace who you are. In that process, it's okay to not have it all figured out. I like to elevate um, uh, BIPOC individuals and in their art. So the image in the middle that says it's not okay to have, it. it's okay to not have it all figured out, is actually by a really young Nicaraguense artist, and um, her handle, in case you want to follow her on Instagram, we don't get paid for these people, we're shouting out, so we want to let you know that, but it's Smug Morenita, she does some really dope art. And this leads us to always be kind and extending grace, because in that journey, you are going to want to have those around you to extend grace and be kind. Before I turn it over to Denise, I also want to elevate another, one, another artist, 
Um, this art actually comes from a Jamaican-born, she lives in Tampa, Florida now, named M. Kobe, M-K-O-B-Y. And during 2020 and all the racial injustice that was going on, she developed because she wants you to find other different individuals to see themselves within her art. This is, uh, this is actually called Build on Pride, and I think that this piece sums up a lot of what Denise is gonna get into about being kind and extending grace. And in this piece, it's actually written to her friends, and it says, Dear friends, I want to take the time to thank you for being you, thank you for supporting me, for fighting with me and for you too. Sorry, thank you for supporting me and for fighting with me and for fighting for me. Thank you for supporting me, for fighting with me and for fighting for me. I'm sorry. Um, I love you, I support you, and I will fight with you and for you. We're creating change together and building together, and that gives me hope. I celebrate you. And I, what I really love about that is that that really embodies any opportunity that I've had to lead some of the nonprofit organizations that I've been involved in. And that's really where I started uh, telling myself to always be kind and extend grace and really share that message with others that I've had the opportunity to work collaboratively with. Um, and I started that because, you know, as I mentioned, I have my regular full-time full -time job. I am actively involved in a lot of um, other service organizations. I'm a dog mom. Um, I try to have a social life, all the things. And sometimes it can be completely overwhelming. I can be completely stressed out. And sometimes I know I might drop the ball, right? And so what I try to do is start off really awesome in the beginning, you know, and everyone's like, oh my God, Denise is so awesome. She's hit these deadlines. She's producing quality work. Like we really love working with Denise because I know that there's gonna be some moment throughout that journey where I might make a mistake, where I may not be able to meet the deadline. I'll communicate that obviously, but I just know that the uh, quote unquote perfection that I set up in the beginning may not, may not always be that way throughout the entire journey. And so I try to practice always being kind and always extending grace to others because I do expect that in return. I know that there are a lot of times where people say you can't expect you and other people. I do expect for you to be kind to me. I do expect for you to extend grace to me um, because that's just being courteous, right? And that we all have moments where we need support, where we need encouragement. And so I am that person to you and I do expect um, for you to be that person to me in return. Awesome. One of the things I forgot to say, and I normally say this throughout the presentation, is we're not experts, so don't come for us. <laughs> a lot of what we share comes from a narrative and personal experiences. So I say this because our, our last tip is intertwined, and there are some um, like references and, and academic individuals that we are referencing in regards to this last tip, and that is collective work and responsibility and what that actually means when you're embracing it. What does that mean when you're normalizing some of these difficult topics that maybe you're not talking with friends? And so in the academic world, one of the things that we want to leave with is subject positionality. So really looking at from the lens of respecting each other, really looking at it from the lens of checking our own privileges and what those are and anytime we're in a space. The second thing is really learning that we can be more through a collective mindset, right? We can be more if we collectively join together this idea of a podcast versus me on my own doing my own thing, Denise on her own, and the magic of bringing two communities of two women of color together to really bring two very different perspectives on the topics that we talk about. And the last thing is really collective learning versus individual success. I said this earlier, but y'all, the honest power in this. If we as society, and you can define society however you want, I actually got challenged recently by a friend of ours that was like, would you guys talk about society? What does society even mean? It, it's up to you, so don't come for us. Don't come for me again. But really, if as society we embody this concept of collective learning, collective together as one versus this individual success that sometimes um, is, is promoted a little bit more. And one of the most powerful things to leave you off with this tip for you to really, if you take away one thing, maybe even out of everything we said besides the name of our podcast, is learning in community is a practice of love by Bell Hooks. It is really powerful because that's truly it. And as we talk about these topics, whether it's about mental health, generational trauma, um, 
being, you know, at an age where you grew up in a culture where you were told to be married and have kids, and why did you go after your career, and, right, and your profession, but to really be able to talk about these, these topics and then bring this lens of community and bring those to the table to normalize these topics and collectively as a community get through together. And that's the last tip that we want to share with you. And well, before we move, I, I want to just point out the, the piece of artwork. So I'm sure some of you are familiar with uh, Candy uh, Wiley. Um, you probably don't know that person by name, but that was the artist that actually uh, did the Obama portraits. And so definitely elevated his status at that time, but he's been around for a really long time. And a lot of his artwork really focuses on using everyday people that he randomly finds on the street of New York and paints them absolutely beautifully and, and making them part of um, his art collection. Awesome. He's also known for taking a lot of um, what you would call out of very historic white art and bringing in a, a different lens into it and replicating it in that manner. So this is how you can contact us. Um, and we want to open it up to questions in case you do have any questions. Do you want to add anything to these? No, um, it, it looks like our slide kind of like messed up our um, email, but all of you are bright enough to know that it is .com and that those M's on the end really belong um, <laughs> and they're part of the other slide. So. <laughs> and thank you for having us during your lunch hour. Hopefully your, your tummy, your food is being digested and you didn't put you to sleep. Any questions? Talk about how you start a podcast. Like, what resources do you? Great question. Um, so we started with the equipment with a, a Yeti Nano mic. Um, that's honestly as fancy as we got. We never <laughs> added like the pop, right? Like the pop socket thing to help with the the pops. Uh, well, before I think it's really important to know that we actually launched our podcast in the middle of the pandemic. And so uh, while we thought of the idea late 2019 and like started meeting, we actually didn't officially launch until May 2020. And so obviously our time was definitely different then because we couldn't go outside. And so we had a lot of time to like do a lot of research. And as Mariana mentioned, we started with the equipment. And since we couldn't be in the same spaces together because we were trying to be really great citizens um, and follow rules and protocols that were put in place. And we actually had to do it virtually. And Mariana is really the techie one. Uh, and we would set up Zooms, record them, and she does the editing. Um, you want to talk about maybe Yeah, so, so Zoom, we use Zoom to record, um, and then obviously just extract the voice sound from it. And then MacBook, I use the platform on the MacBook um, to cut the episodes. And then the biggest platform we used to get the episodes onto additional platforms was Anchor. We went with Anchor. We really started and still are kind of like surface level, just the basics of what we can afford. I will add a layer that I'm glad we did from the beginning because I know people um, don't do this maybe until later on. The first one is the LLC. Um, we did pay for our logo. We found Denise knew an artist. They were running a deal. We were like, you know what? Let's just put a little pennies together and get our logo done professionally. Um, what else? A bank account. We did open a bank account after we had the LLC established. The one thing we haven't done that, you know, I would say do from the beginning is trademark um, as well. Whatever your your name is, your platform. But honestly, that's it, y'all. Like we don't. We used to have a website. We stopped. Um, the website because it unless you're bringing in money it's right you have to pay for that that name on the website and all that so we actually about a year ago um, turned our website off and that's it we've just been doing like bare minimum we are a summer podcast we're not extremely busy between the community service work our full-time jobs and other responsibilities as humans that we have summer was just the only time that we could um, dedicate to it record cut and release um, so that's something different. I know some podcasts are year-round. We've just decided for it to be a summer podcast. Yes. Um, so I have a question for you, Dennis. Uh, it's related to the first point that you mentioned about uh, discarding someone from their life uh, for their uh, mental peace and inner peace. So uh, when in the near future, when you sit down and reflect on yourself uh, about the decisions, about such decisions that you made when you were already in an emotional breakdown, 
um, do you categorize such a decision as uh, rather impulsive or do you think about it as a rational decision that you made? Because decisions like these can sometimes add up to the emotional data and take a toll on yourself. Absolutely. So that decision was made uh, three years ago, well, the year I was turning 40. Everything happened for me the year I turned 40. <laughs> uh, and I think because I was already wow. in a certain mindset about focusing more on myself and how I wanted the next 40 plus years of my life to look, that it definitely was a rational decision and that um, while I think of this brand often and there, there have been some major uh, life changes that have happened in my life and in her life where we still update each other. You know, for example, I, my stepdad passed away and then a few months after that, my dad passed away and those were individuals that, you know, she knew. And so I didn't call, but I did send a text and say, hey, just wanna let you know, like, this has happened. Even when I thought my dog was gonna die, like I sent her a message because she was there when I first got my dog. Like she hosted a, a puppy shower instead of a baby shower, uh, where people brought me like puppy gifts and stuff. Um, so she's been a very instrumental part um, in my life. What I have learned and realized though that the message that she sent wasn't necessarily really about me, it was about her. She was going through her own transformation as well and was learning how to process some of the things that she was going through. And so her message to me was, um, uh, a, a, a knee-jerk reaction, and um, she did eventually send a follow-up, you know, message apologizing and explaining, you know, her mindset. Uh, I'm still processing that, uh, so I'm not quite there yet, only because of our history and the countless times that I've always been there for her, even when I hadn't wanted to be, and the one time I needed her and reached out to her. And she wasn't there for me, really. It hurt my feelings. Yes, Denise, I give you props. And the reason I give you props is when you're younger, you're still learning about yourself. By the time you hit 40, you know thyself. And in the business that both you and Mariana are in, knowing thyself and knowing your other, your audience is really important. So for you to know yourself and know that that relationship was not going to be sustaining to you or to them. I give you props. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now they are proud out there. So thank you. <laughs> I, you know, because you know, it, it's tough. You know, this is someone that I met in college, right? And we, when you were younger, when I was younger, yeah. And like you said, now I, like, uh, you know yourself. I know myself. So thank you. Well, don't forget to check out our podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Follow us, like us, leave a review, slide in our DMs and give us comments uh, as well. We would love to hear from you, especially if you have any suggestions for topics. Awesome. Thank y'all. Thank you.